Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm very glad to see Nick and Bruno. And I just made a quick appearance for the last Wednesday webinar of, uh, of the year. So thank you guys for letting me into the meeting. I was worried that like, I'm going to come in and you're going to be like, who is this person trying to hijack our webinar? So thank you for letting me in. <laughs> hey, so now are you well? I'm good, thank you. How are yes. you? Ah, good, good, good. Nick? Also good. How's Cape Town? A little overcast today, but we hope that clears up by the weekend when it matters. You're not allowed to complain. You're in Cape Town. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, Bruno, we can't really complain either. We have like an ocean right here running. Oh, through, yeah. No. Through oh, Jersey, little ocean. So yeah. <laughs> we have our own ocean. Thank you, Bruno. <laughs> Nick, it's so nice to see you. It's weird, though, to, you know, not be in the same office as you. So it's it's pleasant to see you on a webinar. It feels like this is the only way I'm seeing you this month. <laughs> it's it's fine. I'll be back uh, soon enough. Unfortunately, I've only got another week here. So sad times. So grateful. So you can come back now. Hey, you out of the dog box. You can return again. <laughs> it's safe. <laughs> cool. Sure, guys. So it's the 14th. Of this semester, in other words, 10 days until Christmas Eve. Have you guys done your Christmas shopping? No. I did have one. I did, I did for my um not legal mother-in-law. I already have a gift for her, and this is how we know where priorities lie. Thank you, Makoti of the year. That's the only gift I have. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, so it's going to be a day before shopping spree. But remember, like we're still working, you know, we're still working like uh, this week and next week. So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. You are you closing between Christmas and New Year? And uh, so we got it's skeleton stuff. We got skeleton stuff. It's uh, very yeah. similar to you guys. So we have a team there. Uh, they deal with urgent and any new stuff that comes in. But um, yeah, it's 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 uh, minimalistic. Speaking of urgent, please, and then I'll keep quiet. This time of the year is urgent time of the year, Nick. Yes. And we all know that. So, so for our viewers' benefit, the reason why this time of the year is called urgent time of the year is nothing that happens in our offices this time of the year is even remotely normal. Uh, the weirdest cases, and everything is super urgent. Now, Nick, I know about a few urgents that you've had. Uh, Bruno, I even know about an urgent you almost had, but be, be that as it may, we'll leave that one out of the conversation. Sure. But um, please tell a fun story, each one of you, uh, for our viewers' benefit, on the urgents we've seen in the past uh, months or so, this silly season urgents. What are the kind of things that we're seeing? Nick, do you want to start? Uh, I can start with uh, our Cape Town, our Cape Town urgent that we had. What's this? Two weeks ago. Uh, luckily, it didn't. It didn't. Uh, doesn't look like it might need to go to court. But uh, there was a, a a tenant who unfortunately decided that he wanted to flood the floors, uh, and and a report from a uh, architect who supposes that the reason that he wanted to do that was because he started a fire in the shower. That's a uh, yeah, that, that was an actual architectural report I read. So, yes, very much silly season in uh, December. Yeah, that's intriguing. Yeah. I have questions about this fire in the shower. Was the intention too bright? Because I can respect that in a way. If it's raining, it's so you don't easy have to a clean up. You dry in the shower and you just wash the ash away. That, that's actually quite smart. It's... I think from, I think from a professional a standard, we're not going to recommend it. You might just yeah. scare a couple of our clients away. <laughs> but what was the intention nick why did they want to make a fire in the shower like we don't, we don't also know. second question that they have a plastic shower curtain because that viewers would be very dangerous plastic does in fact catch fire no, no sure. unfortunately we don't know we will never know that's pretty well so, so funny story from my side you guys know the funny story so i'm not going to speak about that one but the um, 
actually we're doing an urgent right now it's turned into about five urgents so i think in the last two months we've opened nine files on this thing um and it's one of those so you know that and i mean when you ask about what the outlook for the year is i'll actually go through this very similar type of thing but um properties being repossessed previous owners and yeah this thing was absolutely insane so we got the eviction was dragged, and I can understand the client's frustration. I actually feel bad for the client. Eviction dragged out through court. The guys kept fighting, firing attorneys, bringing attorneys, you know, you name it. Eventually, they don't appear in court. Order gets granted, uh, about to get executed. They bring an application for rescission of judgment, application for suspension of the order. Um, that They lose. They bring an application for leave to appeal their loss. They then bring another application for leave to appeal the eviction order, even though there's a rescission pending on it. So yeah, it's been quite interesting. I think moral of the story though is number one, silly season. So it's absolutely insane. The client's obviously putting a lot of pressure. So we've literally been in urgent court like every two days with this thing. Um, but it also shows again where we're going from an outlook perspective. But I suppose that's the next question that you're probably going to speak about. Um, so yeah, it's it's been uh, interesting. It's been an interesting year. It has been, hey. It has been a particularly interesting year. And your story? Hmm. Urgent stories. I must say, at this stage, I think my favorite one was actually the one Nick told <laughs> told the story about. Okay. Um, the the other urgents that we're seeing this time of the year is, I think you see them as much as we do. Um, uh, orders that were supposed to be executed yeah. um, and as soon as you send the sheriff uh, somebody pops up and, and tries to stop the order yeah. I okay. must say that it's sad to see how uh, emotional play comes into these things yeah. like uh, the order the one urgent I'm thinking about now was uh, sort of in the middle of November and mm -hmm. Then the sheriff, but it's been, the court gave gave them like more than a month to vacate, and we told him like, listen, you had time to vacate. We're sending the sheriff now to do the eviction. Really, it's go time. So they came back and said, no, 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 we can't evict them because they've already put up the Christmas tree. And I thought, I think the oh, one sure. thing that I thought was important to know here is, um, it's still November. A B, if if you're getting evicted and there is a court order. The thing is, there's no stopping execution of your order. So to not do anything about it and think, you know what, it's cool. I'm just going to hang and nobody can evict me. It's very unfortunate because the trauma that that results from a forced eviction, not mm. the people that were stubbornly not uh, uh, adhering to the court order, there are children and other people involved in these things. So uh, as, as sad as that story could be, I think there is, uh, there is a lesson to be learned about um, the responsibility of, of adults and citizens when there is a court order to comply with the order because uh, to not comply with the court order, um, obviously the sheriff can execute, but you have much bigger risk um, and and that's obviously contempt of court. I, I you know about that uh, Orlando eviction that that we've mm -hmm. done that we've struggled with for yeah. so long. And I mean that lady is serving um, a two year jail sentence. Like she's still in jail. She's not not getting out um, because of contempt of court because of stubborn um, refusal to comply with the court order. So a silly yeah. season in the sense that people do do things and think, oh, nobody will evict me this time of the year or the sheriff probably won't or it won't yeah. happen. The thing is, if there's a court order, we execute and it's our job. I mean, as officers of the court, I think one of the biggest things for us is to ensure that people comply with court orders because what else um, do we do then? We get court orders and just be like, okay, no, do my money, why any? Um, it's an important one. So I added Debbie Downer one for us. It's a pleasure. I do what I can. Um, but, but it's actually, so it's interesting, uh, uh, it's interesting something that you said there, because as you, as you're explaining, um, like I can just imagine somebody that's never watched the show before going short, that's like, um, you know, attorneys speaking about evictions, Christmas, like, 
it seems very um, like we're desensitized. But it's actually quite funny. So obviously everything needs to be seen in context. Number one, we like we do, we've been doing this for quite a while. So most of the viewers know that we always explain how things work and now we're speaking obviously about the execution and um your know, court orders and being officers of the court and stuff like that but i mean the reality behind it is anyone on the flip side wants to ask me oh but why does legislation like pi exist as an example the reality behind it is if it wasn't for that piece of legislation old school rules would apply my property nothing else matters give it back and i think you know, just for people's understanding, when we start speaking about poverty versus stubbornness, uh, poverty, the court would consider. We're not being uh, callous by, uh, by wanting to enforce a court order over Christmas when there was opportunity where the court had considered, where in fact the courts very often over consider in my, you know, in my respectful opinion. Um, you know, if an order gets granted, it again within the scope of the work that we do it's not callous to go well you know what they've they've had the opportunity and now it is a matter of actually executing a court order so it's just interesting how everything gets taken into account i've had many cases where christmas was taken into account and that is a reality but it's something that you kind of have to deal with and not be stubborn about because if you open up to the court a judge would consider your circumstances and would make an ample ruling um, as opposed to waiting for an order to be granted and now after the fact, um, you know, trying to wangle, wangle out of it. Yeah, exactly. We've actually seen um, a few orders now in the past uh, towards the end of November and, and early December. Um, orders where the court ordered people to vacate by the end of December and the court actually... And it was a bunch of different courts. So it's like Gauteng courts and Western Cape everywhere where the court said, we'll give until the end of mm. December, but we can only send the sheriff, say, for instance, the 10th yeah. of Jan, thereabouts. So, so to your point, mm. the court is so um, extremely careful, especially mm. when there are minor children and, and disabled people, yeah, I mean, all the equity groups, but especially mm. minor children. Yeah, the court's absolutely. The so extremely careful with that but that's uh, and i think that's exactly the point that's why it's important to by the time there is an eviction order against you to appreciate the fact that the chances that it's going to be executed is very 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 high yeah, absolutely yeah so true yeah and i suppose the second round of questions i'm suspecting is what uh, the the overview of 2022 I like it. Let's do it. You can begin. Sure. Um, so from a so very technical perspective, so I'm not speaking about myself now, the business or, um, yeah, you know, things like that. Like, how did the business go more? Uh, if we look at, because no one cares. No, no viewers actually going to watch this show and care about what I say. But from the property. I property do. <laughs> we, we can go <laughs> off here and discuss that later. Um, <laughs> but it's been good. It's been good. Don't worry. Um, no, so from a industry perspective, I'm finding that the interest uh, rate hikes have had an immense impact. They've been very sudden, uh, which I suppose was inevitable. We should have foreseen this coming, uh, but unfortunately, people didn't stress test the, 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 the deals that they were getting into and the bonds that they were getting. Um, by not stress testing, number one, now they're at a point where they can't afford it anymore. Um, I'm, I am, from an investor perspective, I am disappointed that there wasn't enough testing because I would have said the investors at the, at the, the current rate, it should have already been stress tested at this rate. So there shouldn't have been any surprise, especially considering that we're going like pre-COVID, um, you know, pre, uh, pre-COVID uh, rates, which wasn't, uh, which isn't unsurprising, right? Um, homeowners slightly different because remember, obviously there's less, not less educated, but less informed rather. So you're not in the industry. So you go out, people say, oh, you can get a fantastic interest rate. You know, kind of disappointed that maybe the banks, although some banks do claim to have stress tested the affordability at a higher rate. Uh, I, I, I can't say whether that's true or not. In any case, so overview 2023, we're seeing that uh, the market's turning a little bit. There are going to be a lot of properties in the market. How they get to market is, is 
yeah, it, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of auctioneers contacting me now, uh, you know, selling execution guys getting ready. I don't know if it is, if that's not a bit ambitious because we, we all know that the process to get into the selling execution is a lot harder than what it used to be. Sorry, my alarm just went off, so I'll wrap up quickly. Um, Yes, yeah, so it's not what it used to be, but at some point in time, you're going to see in 2023, the market is going to, to get a lot of properties. There are going to be a lot of opportunities for property investors out there. The state agents are probably going to be able to get a few decent mandates. So for the industry as a whole, it looks good from a property practitioner perspective, but as homeowners, uh, it's unfortunate. A lot of people are going to either buy down into a different bracket, value bracket, or they're gonna start renting. And you can see that already. Uh, a lot of people have decided, and it's smart. And if there's any advice I can give in the property side, if you can't afford it, don't try and fight it. Uh, do something else. You don't have to sell. I speak to so many people about alternative ways of um, leveraging a property to do other things with it. I know guys that will live in a property that costs them 7,000 Rand rent a month, but they happen to own a 3 million rand property. They've just been smart on how they use it. Uh, so you don't have to live in those means to own decent properties and get good returns. You just need to get out of that mindset of it's a house, I'm going to live in it. It's like, no, it's, it's a business. You can run it, go get another house and go live in that. So yeah, that's kind of my overview where I saw things uh, going 2022, 2023. I'm going to switch off the alarm now. <laughs> okay nick over to you 2022 and what do you see for 2023 yeah so i think um the the most exciting thing for me was to see sort of the industry coming back into its own um over the course of the year so there have been a, a couple of things which which you know both our offices and bruno's offices have done the property show came back which is phenomenal a phenomenal for all of us and i know the the 2023 property show dates have been set up um I also had the privilege of going to the Money Summit, and that was just a, a different perspective. There was property there, but also a lot of other instruments within the uh, financial industry. Um, and some of the most exciting things are we've seen the, the property industry is really trying to bounce itself back after the effects that we've had from COVID. Um, there's very interesting information coming out with, within the property market. Obviously, we don't have the time to go through all of that. Um, but the Lightstone data surely shows some, some interesting trends which are going on, particular semigration. Um, which is happening basically from, from Gauteng to the Western Cape, how people are buying, what they're buying. Um, so it, it's interesting and, and we can definitely see the industry is trying to now pick itself up once again. And uh, I, I still think they're going to be the challenges, as Bruno says, you know, um, uh, with, with the interest rate hikes that are coming, the, the real effects that we're going to feel from that, we're only going to feel in, in a little bit still. Um, you know, the, that's, that's still going to come. Um, but it's nice to see that the industry is picking itself up and we're obviously trying to get our industry thriving and connecting with one another again. So, so for 2023, that's really where I'm excited um, to see the, the property industry and, and all of the property practitioners, you know, lawyers, whatever the case is, come together again um, and, and really try to build up this, this industry that we, you know, obviously all love. And that's why we're, we're here. That's why we started the podcast. So I'm excited for that. Absolutely. That's cool. That's very cool. I think we, the sentiment I get from the industry as well is is extremely positive. Even um, even though things like interest rate hikes, I must say, I see. <clears throat> I actually heard uh, this was. Let me now not say the wrong. Uh, company i'll be in trouble for days oh yes better bond definitely a better bond talk at one of the uh yen functions for for one of the uh national estate agencies who said yes the interest rate hikes are, are like a bucket of cold water in the face except it was an expected thing. It's like, remember people that, that this was not a bit of one quote, this is a still nothing. Remember those ice bucket challenges? Like if you stand there with the ice in your hand and you know you're going to dunk this up your head, you can't possibly be that surprised. And that was sort of the interest rate thing. We, we knew it's going to happen. Nobody can really be that surprised about it. Uh, I get that still, even if you knew, if you saw it coming, an ice bucket challenge is a bit of a surprise. But the message uh, there from Better Bond, I must say, I do agree with 
uh, uh, very much, it, it will obviously create movement in the industry. Again, yes, it might be, to your point, Bruno, uh, because people have to uh, go for something, something more affordable or whatever, but we're going to see movement. We see movement already in the rental industry, in the rental space, unfortunately. Um, high shares, but not nearly where we were a year ago. Like we're much better than what we were a year ago. If you look at the TPN data at this stage, um, we, we're looking much better. Um, sure. Yes, there, there are issues with um, non-paying tenants, evictions, but that's nothing new. Currently, obviously, flooding right across the country. And uh, for everybody that's been affected by that or, or drought for that matter, um, it's real. It's something very real that, that we as an industry didn't have to deal with a while back is natural disasters. It's, it's wild. You go from, you know, hurricanes on the East Rand to massive flooding in, in places where you, you know, normally don't see more than 10 millimeters of rain at a time. So it's wild and the, and the, the world is a little upside down, but I think property will always um, be what it is. It's a, we're a, we're a different industry in the sense that we are, we are family in a way. We, uh, <laughs> we understand each other and we understand how we work and how we, how all the different role players interact. Uh, I mean, the industry is so small with uh, one player moving uh, from one company to another or whatever the case might be. Everybody knows about it. Like it's like a family conversation that we're having. And I do love the fact, Nick, to your point, that everything is opening up again. Uh, the property show was awesome, but then Reese, I think Reese was my highlight of the year. Uh, private property really well done there. Uh, Reese was absolutely amazing. And um, I think that just showed us again where we are as an industry. I'm really looking forward to 2023. Nick, you've been there right by my side through 2020. And since the very start uh, of COVID, I've said the next two years, 2020 and 2021 is going to be very rough. 2022, we're going to start picking up and 2023, uh, we're going to go for a home run. And uh, I think that's exactly what we're seeing. 2022 did start picking up. I think 2023, I believe 2023 is going to be absolutely amazing. Remember, it's a free election year. So we are going to see credit amnesties. Guys, please, please, please make sure you upload your tenant payment profile data, not blacklistings and stuff. Don't focus on a blacklisting and a judgment. Focus on your payment profile data. Get those uploaded because that's unaffected by a credit amnesty. We are going to see a credit amnesty towards the end of next year. Maybe early 2024 only, depending on uh, on what the predicted uh, election dates would be. But remember, we're heading into a pre-election year. Remember, when we go into election year, evictions are uh, much slower. So my advice for the industry going into 2023, pre-election year, focus on, on non-paying tenants. Act on it as quickly as you can. Don't sit around and think, I'll do an eviction later. Because if we start an eviction towards the end of next year, we're probably only going to be able to execute like after the elections. So keep these things in mind. This is how we know we've been around for long enough, right? Yeah, that's we true. Have evictions yes. around election time. And unfortunately, it does have a massive bearing on, sure. uh, on everything we do. But I am looking forward to it. And I um, think 2023 is going to be a magnificently amazing year right taking us into 2024 which is a pretty exciting year in itself sure nice one look cool. that's my story <laughs> that's awesome well I, I then i suppose yeah i suppose then um it's it's now a matter of wishing everyone a very very happy festive season uh for those religion uh, for those religious merry christmas um i hope that it's restful. I hope that everyone gets a break and that, yeah, we hit the ground running next year. And like Solna said, if the property industry is expecting a lot of gains, then yeah, let's, yeah, let, let's, let's hit it off. Um, 
quick and fast. So yeah, and thanks so much to uh, to Nick and Silna for um, being around this year, for being on the show, some more than others. Um, and <laughs> and yeah, I've, I've, um, throughout the year, I received very positive feedback on the influence of the show. Um, and obviously, people always invited to to ask questions, but it has served a huge purpose. I know that people are on our sites and they get a lot of answers from this. So at least there, we've we've given back a little bit. Uh, but thanks so much for being there, guys. Yeah, and you, same Bruno. to you, Bruno. Like Bruno and Nick, both of you. Thank you so much. I mean, I couldn't make. I don't think I've done fifty percent of the webinars. And thank you so much for catching the ball there. But thank you for being there in every single show, Bruno. Really appreciate it. And Nick, thank you so much. You know I won't be able to live without uh, you as my business partner, but thank you for picking up the ball on this one as well. You've been fantastic this year. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Merry Christmas and be safe. A man of few, a man of very few words. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> and well, imagine I'm your partner. He doesn't that's, have time. <laughs> uh, it's, that's my business partner there. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Awesome. All right, Cheers, everyone. everyone. Merry All right. Christmas.